the Cold Mental channel. If you don't know me, my name is Ermindo and my channel is all about software development and Python programming. In today's episode, I'm going to teach you about Booleans, the most important data type in Python or any other programming language. It's so important that when you actually look into the detail of how information is stored in computers, everything is stored as a Boolean. Isn't that mind blowing? Did you know that computers store everything as either a one or a zero? That's called binary. One is on and zero is off. Suffice to know that there is an area in mathematics dedicated to mathematical operations on binary digits. And that's called Boolean algebra. Excuse me? You don't even mention my name. Sorry, who are you? I am George Bull. Okay, so you are George Bull, and why do you think you can't interact? I happen to invent Boolean algebra, and if it wasn't for me, computers would not exist. Oh, sorry, I almost forgot to mention you. You want to teach Booleans, and you don't recommend my paper on the mathematical analysis of logic. I think that would be too heavy. I'm only doing a beginner introduction here. I don't want to overwhelm people. Do you have a YouTube channel? I can maybe point people to that, uh, to your YouTube channel, so you can have a chance to I talk about I don't have a YouTube channel, but plenty of people have talked about me. Google me, please. Okay, I'll do that, don't worry. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. As I was saying, Boolean algebra was invented by George Bull and it was fundamental in the development of electronics and computers. I encourage you to dig deeper, but you don't need to do that to follow this tutorial. Let's start with the basics. Booleans. A Boolean is a data type that can have two potential values, either a true or a false. In Python, a Boolean is known as a bool. To create a bool, you can simply do value equal to true or value equal to false. Simple, right? To ensure you are dealing with an actual bool, we can confirm that using the type function. We can convert any data types in Python to a boolean using the bool function. This function will return true for almost any data type, except the following. For empty collections, or if an object is false, or if the object is none, or if the object is zero, everything else will be true. We have seen how to create a boolean out of any data type in Python using the bool function. But on its own, that's not very useful. A boolean is far more useful if we use it to store comparison operations. Comparison operations are used to compare things. Is this number bigger than that number? Is that list equal to that list? Is this monster equal to that monster? Sorry, just kidding. In Python, we can't compare monsters just yet. The great thing about comparison operators is that they will give you a bool as a result, which you can then store in a variable. Let me show you some comparison operations that you'll see often in Python. You might be asking, why rightly? Why can't we just use equal to check if two numbers are equal? Let's try that in a Python terminal. Oops, what happened there? The Python interpreter thought we are trying to assign zero to one. But zero is not a variable, so the Python compiler returned an error. This happened because equals is used primarily as an assignment operator. An assignment operator allows us to store values in variables. And the reason the equality operator is equals equals and not equals is to avoid that kind of confusion. The exclamation mark equals, on the other hand, doesn't clash with equals, so it doesn't need doubling down. The great thing about the comparison operators is that they don't just apply to numbers, they apply to strings, lists, tuples, dictionaries, and any class in Python that implements the right methods. I'm being vague, I know, but I am going to keep the best for last. Without going 
to academic. This type of thing where you can use the same operator applied to different data types, it's called operator overloading. We are using the same operators to do completely different things, but they are conceptually similar. You can't use the same code to compare two numbers as the one you use to compare two strings. Even though it looks like we are using the same code, that's not the case. Does that make sense? Okay, maybe not, but you should just trust me. If you don't trust me, then I'll have to tell you about the magic methods. And if you are listening to that, now you probably want no more. It's too late. You must find what magic methods are, but I think you will regret a little bit once I'm done explaining them to you. To understand magic methods, you need to know that these comparison operators are just methods with a special syntax. Each data type in Python is a class, and each class has a list of functions, methods. If a class supports the comparison operators we saw, the class will implement the following method signatures. If you have seen methods before in Python, you will notice immediately the double underscore at the beginning and end of each method name. These funny looking methods are called magic methods in Python. Nothing to do with magic, but somehow someone thought it would be a funky name for them, as these methods are called internally without us calling them directly. When I say us, yes, us who write the code. So when we do one bigger or equal to two, the Python interpreter will convert it to the underscore g the underscore brackets to close brackets. So because one is object of type int, the method double underscore g double underscore as defined in the int class will be called. The reason why it looks the same code is because each class has a different implementation of the same magic methods. At this stage, we should take a step back. It is useful to know about magic methods, but in our beginner's journey, we shouldn't get too deep in them as we want first to learn the basics. Suffice to know they exist for now. In programming, we have to go easy. Some concepts may be hard to sink in, but eventually they do. And the best thing about magic methods is you can pretend they don't exist, at least for now. We have learned how to create a Boolean in Python, how to transform any value of any data type in Python to a Boolean. Also, we have seen how to use comparison operators, and we ended up talking about operator overloading and magic methods. There is a bit more to cover about Booleans, but let's do it in a separate day, in a separate video. We have to go easy after all. In the description below, you will find a list of resources they can use to do some research and uh, deepen up a little bit your knowledge about Booleans. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, smash the like button and if you would like to see more videos like this, click subscribe and see you again soon. Happy coding!